in 9.4, we are now asked to go and determine the values for k, right, for which the given equation. So let's immediately look at that part over there. They're telling me that g of x, g of x is equal to k, and you need to go and find the value of k so that this equation with k in it has three distinct or three different roots. Now, if you look at the cubic graph, you've already earlier had its roots in factor form. But you're now asked to bring in a new component where you are saying that g of x is equal to k. Now, g of x, as you know, is also y. When we normally refer to a straight line, as in the case of the tangent a moment ago, that tangent was sloping down. Right? That tangent was sloping down. <coughs> so we found that the gradient being negative indicated that. But if we compare this new equation, we are actually finding that it looks like that line. The only difference is the gradient is zero. If the gradient is zero, and we look at what it actually means, one just needs to, for a moment, look at the definition of the gradient. The gradient is the change in y over the change in x, but it is also the tan of theta. So if you take a line and you draw it against the x-axis, that angle that is being formed is the angle theta. But if this gradient is now equal to zero, then it means the angle that is being formed, theta, is now zero degrees. And that is telling me that if theta is zero degrees, then this line is actually running parallel to the x-axis instead of at the slant as before. And hence, the question in this case is now, go and find out for which values of k there'll be a line y equals k which is running parallel with the x-axis but it must cut the graph of gx in three distinct places, three different places. Wouldn't that be obvious that if you work between the maximum turning point and the minimum turning point, that you are going to find the answer that they are asking you to find in this case k, which means that your k value in this case is going to lie between the y value at point t and 0, which is on the x-axis. That y value at point t was the turning point of which the x value was 1. We had that earlier, and if you can plug that into g of x, which you had at the beginning, to find the y value, you will notice that g of 1, if I take the second part of the equation, is minus 2 times 1, minus 5, 1 plus 2 being squared. So that is going to give me a positive 3 times 3 squared, which is 9. And that gives me the value being 27. So k is therefore less than 27, greater than 0.